Thank you, Howard. Our final speaker this morning is Dr. James Fraser. His lab, located on the Mission Bay campus, explores fundamental questions in protein biophysics and structural biology. James is affiliated with four of our graduate programs, biophysics, tetrad, chemistry and chemical biology, and PSPG. And he runs the highly innovative and highly intensive team challenge course for first year students, which takes place in the teaching lab in Genentech Hall. Last year's cohort published a paper from the results of the experiments run in this course. The title of his talk, which really could be about almost anything, is Some Like It Hot. James. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, it's a real uh, honor to be here, uh, and it's a special honor to talk after Howard's talk, because we really span the length scales of UCSF. I mean, he's talking about communities on sort of the mile length scale with uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of people. And then we've heard talks that are, you know, are focusing on cells, on sort of the micron or millimeter length scale, C. elegans on the millimeter length scale. And Jane's already introduced some aspects of protein structure, which is on what we call the angstrom length scale. This is you know, several orders of magnitude even smaller, the kind of thing that we can only visualize not with a light microscope, but with, um, with specialized equipment that uses x-rays or electrons to be able to visualize structures. So I'm a, I'm a structural biologist, and we like to make those beautiful cartoons that, that Jane was showing you earlier. Here I'm showing you uh, not only the cartoon representation, but also in the light blue sort of cloud up there, an actual glimpse into the primary data that we're trying to build those models into. That's what's called the electron density. And that is essentially a probability distribution function. It's a map of where this protein is. And so you know, the end result, the beautiful cartoons, is, is uh, the result of us threading, uh, using computer graphics, a detailed uh, atomistic model into this cloud of electron density. But the fundamental realization is that that we've come to recently is that that cloud doesn't just determine one structure. So you can see here that that little bit of extra density up top actually nicely fits what we call an alternative conformation of the protein. And this is because what, to be able to visualize this map, we need to take an average of millions and millions of these individual proteins to be able to visualize them using either electrons or x-rays. And so my lab has really specialized over the last few years in figuring out computational tricks to be able to build these types of multiple conformation models. And it's been a little bit of a controversial idea in the field, so Liz suggested I uh, explain it with a less controversial analogy. And so that's uh, here. Uh, <laughs> if you... If you imagine, really, we have sort of one state over here and another state over here, these two political extremes, what we're getting out of our structural biology techniques isn't a nice view of Trump or Obama, but rather some kind of ensemble <laughs> average, right? And so if we use our computer modeling, you know, we can recognize sort of the, the region where there are eyes or region where there's kind of a mouth there, but we really don't understand the differences between the two because often the average isn't representative of what's going on in, a, in an environment. We really need to understand the different populations. And in a biological sense, we need to understand which conformations promote function and which ones are inhibitory. <laughs> so, So, so that's, really, that's really what my lab does. We really try to, to tease apart these, aver these average data into its constituent conformations, and then we use that data to these different conformations to be able to design mutations or figure out how small molecules combine to these different uh, conformations to be able to modulate their function. And so now I'll just turn to the reason my, why my uh, title is, is Some Like It Hot. We've gotten pretty good at teasing out these different conformations from average data. But that's sort of like uh, you know, really taking a very blurry picture and just saying these are the, the parts of the, the picture that we think uh, really made up that, 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 that blur. 
What we'd like to do now is be able to make molecular movies. And to be able to do that, we need to be able to say action to get the movie to start. And one of the things that we're doing, and this really uh, is, is something that's related very much to what Jane talked about, which is, is that we're using a natural trigger, which is temperature changes, to be able to tell the proteins to start moving. So what we do is we shoot proteins out of a, out of a liquid jet. We hit them with an infrared laser that changes the temperature very rapidly. And then we can image them with an x-ray beam. And that's allowing us to then take many, many images as a function of time between the first infrared laser and the x-ray pulse to be able to make these molecular movies. And so uh, with that, I, I hope that you know, in a few years, I'll be able to show you some of those movies. And, and maybe we'll have a better idea of, of how ensemble averaging works and how we can uh, move science forward in, in productive ways. So thank you very much. Thank you, James. Please join me in giving all of our speakers a round of applause. Well, I hope this gave you a taste of the really exciting research that happens at UCSF at both of our campuses. I was told to remind you that there are buses at the front of the hotel to take you to the Mission Bay campus for this afternoon's lunch and the student talks that you'll be, get to hear there. But don't leave just yet. The speakers have agreed to stick around and answer any questions you might have. So please feel free to come up and ask them and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks for coming.